Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen. If you haven't subscribed by now, please uh, subscribe because uh, you need this channel, yes? <laughs> okay, so thanks to everyone who has subscribed so far and uh, let's continue. So, user sign up uh, point of sale. So, so far we've been signing up several uh, times but uh, this has become too much we will clean this up very soon actually let's just do that let me go to operations here and click on empty truncate so truncate i could have easily deleted each row but uh, i want the id to start at zero or at one again so that's why i'm using truncate but if I go back, I still get the data that I had here. So sign up. Now, the only problem we have with our sign up is we have no data validation. So anyone can enter whatever they want here. It doesn't need to be a valid email or password. Uh, they would still be accepted. So let's put some rules and regulations to make sure that uh, people are entering what we need. So password has how many characters? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it should we can make it a rule that password should be at least a minimum of eight characters and uh, the email should be a valid email and uh, the username should not contain any numbers and it shouldn't um, I don't know maybe if you don't want it to have spaces so that you the username the user is forced to just write one name instead of several names here etc etc so you can put all kinds of rules and regulations so to do that, let's create a function that does that for us. Of course, we'll create a function because it's easier to deal with functions. So all I want is here. Let's come here to the sign up. What I want is before the insert here, all I want to do is to tell it that uh, uh, the validate function. So the validate function should return true or false. OK, that makes things a little bit easier. So we'll provide exactly this information to the validate function, like so. So this returns true or false. So uh, valid is equal to. So you can either have true or false. If it's true, then everything is valid. And we can go ahead and insert our data. If this returns false, then it means something was wrong. But we need a way to find out exactly what of those things, which of those things was wrong. So instead of returning uh, false, actually, wait a minute. If it returns false, mm, <clears throat> excuse me here. Actually, uh, instead of true or false, because we will need to know which, which items are invalid. So it's a good idea that it returns an array of those items. So then let's change it. Instead of it bringing true or false, it will bring uh, an array, either an empty one or one that contains data. So we can just check if it has um, errors, right? So I'm just going to say errors like that. Wait, something wrong with that. There we go. No, no, there we go, okay. So we can say errors is equal to validate that. And so all we need to do is check if the errors are empty and then we know to insert. So here I can just say if uh, empty, if errors is empty, which means uh, no items in that array, then insert. Otherwise, we will have to show what errors we got yeah but if we're going to be looking for errors down here it would be a good idea to have errors as a valid item up here just an empty array to create an empty array in simple way, ways is to just do that so we have an empty array here but here there's a possibility that we'll add errors to it and then we can go to the view and check for those errors so that uh, we know if there are errors. If there are no errors, then we know uh, things are good and to insert. All right. So let's create the valid validate 
function. So back here, let me just copy that. Actually, I could copy duplicate the insert function because it's very similar. So duplicate and let's call this the validate function. Same information it gets. So depending on the table. Now this will depend on the table really. So here we will put an if statement that checks for which table it is, just like this if statement. So let's copy that if statement and put it right here. So I'm going to put it over here. Okay. So here we will give it, um, we will tell it to return. If things get to this point, okay, what we will do is put our errors here. So we'll say errors is equal to an empty array. Then down at the bottom, we will return errors. And then in the middle here, we have a chance to add something to the errors. If something has been found with errors, we'll add something. And then by the time we return it, it may have something or it may not. So if the table is equal to users, then uh, what we will do is check inside data for very specific items. So we'll say if not, uh, if empty. Uh, data, username. So if the username in data does not exist, then we're going to return an error. So here I'll say error. And I'll specifically use the username. It should be equal to uh, username is required meaning they didn't put a username there, okay? So username is required. Let's uh, do the same for, uh, okay, so if it's not empty there, but if it is, uh, if it's empty there, if it's not empty, let's put an else if here. Let's put if um, data username let me use the trim function so that we can trim it. Uh -huh. So if trim uh, wait, does the other function trim this, the insert? No, it does not. No, 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 no. There's no way of doing that, right? So let's remove the trim. It should be as it is. So if data username uh, contains numbers, we shouldn't, uh, or special characters, it should only contain letters, maybe a space if you want. So let's use a regular expression. So let's say pregmatch. So pregmatch returns true or false if the pattern is matching. So let's add a pattern that matches and the subject is this one here so let's paste that like so so we'll say if not preg much which means things do not go as bland then add an error so i haven't put the pattern there yet but that's okay so we'll say username maybe we say something like only letters and spaces allowed in username. Now, if you don't want to allow spaces, that's okay. To allow spaces is like this. So let's put a character set. We'll say A to Z. So that small letter A to Z is allowed. Capital A to capital Z is allowed. This is pretty much all we allow. But if you want spaces to be allowed, put a space there, just like that. Or you can be very explicit and type slash s like that but this s space represents tabs as well so not really a good idea just put space like so 
So only letters and spaces allowed. But I don't want spaces here. I just want a single username. So I remove that and just say only letters allowed. Okay. So there we go. Um, let's ask. We don't put an else because we are now checking for something else. So here I can say check username. So I want to check for something else as well. The email cannot be empty. And then we'll do the same, a similar thing. Actually, let me just uh, copy the whole thing and paste it here. So wherever there is username, let's change that to email. So check email. So email, uh, email, email is required. Sweet capital here. Mm -hmm. But the prep match for email is different. Actually, the advantage is that, let me cut this. Uh, PHP comes with a function of itself that does this. So it's called the filter. Uh, is it filter var? Yes, yes, filter var. Is it? I'm getting confused here. So the variable we're filtering is here. We have to tell it what we're filtering for. So we want to do a validate email validate hmm it's not giving me a suggestion i think i should say filter all these filters i think start with the word filter and then underscore and then something like if it's validate if it's cleaning i think it contains um, sanitize instead of validate so here i'm trying to validate something so i use validate and then underscore what i'm validating is an email so you see it changed to italic. If you're using sublime text like I am, then it means you've got it right. So sometimes you may want to filter a URL. So you can say uh, sanitize underscore URL. You see it changed to a uh, italic, which means now if this was a URL, it will remove anything that should not belong to a URL. But here we are doing a validation of email, so that's what it is. So we'll put a not there. So if it doesn't pass the test of email, then we can say email is not valid. So email is required or email is not valid. And then we need to also do passwords. So passwords do not match is a thing as well. So let's change email here to password. And let's remove this filter thingy. It's not what we want. So if empty password, then we say password is required. If password uh, is not equal to password retype underscore retype then we can say passwords do not match okay and we can also contribute to and do more by saying uh, what can i do let me add one more here so control shift d so if they don't match, passwords do not match, or else if the password uh, is less than. So let's do a string length, that's a function. If the string length of password is less than eight, then password must be passwords must be at least eight characters long so you can put however many characters you want you can even check if you want to see uppercase lock lowercase to do that you may have to use a uh, preg match like this one so if you want uh, you can check if it has uppercase by just removing these and then if it turns out to be false then you know uh, you can say password must at least have an uppercase letter 
you can check for oops what have i done you can check for numbers by just doing uh, zero to nine so if you do that you, you can say oh password must have a number etc etc so i have a series on regular expressions but i think i didn't complete it yet because it didn't really get that much traction anyway so check password we check so let's come back here and see so we have everything here that we need um, so we're checking for username email and password so all we need now is to display those errors yeah